Hey guys, today we're going into an extraordinary ancient temple called Thiruperundurai. And inside this temple, there are unbelievable carvings that can rewrite history. When we enter this chamber, your eyes are naturally attracted to the deity inside the chamber. But look on top of the doorway. On the lintel, you see a number of patterns. What are they? What do they mean? Are they meaningless patterns carved just for decoration? No, let's take a closer look at them. In chemistry classes, we learned about molecules made of different atoms. Are these molecules? Or are they simple flower designs? Don't they remind you of stars in the sky? Yes. These are 27 lunar stations called nakshatras. You can see these stations in the night sky. Lunar station, that's a fancy word, right? What is that? It's not a space station or something like that. Take the sky or the ecliptic and you can split that into 27 segments using groups of stars as markers for each segment. Each segment is called a nakshatra or a star system. Why? To calculate time, dates, seasons, everything can be done using these nakshatras. Today, most people think these are used solely for astrology. But think about how ancient people calculated time during the night. Did they not have any indicators of how to tell time during nighttime? No, you can tell time by following the positions of stars, groups of stars, etc. So these nakshatras were also used in astronomy. But are these carvings really showing lunar stations or am I just guessing? You can see these inscriptions here. These are written in ancient Tamil language, and I can read them even today. Here it says Uttaram. Here it says Puram. It's called Purva in Sanskrit. These are the names of the lunar stations or nakshatras clearly written under each rectangle. And inside each rectangle, we can see the shape and position of stars. So there is no doubt that these are, in fact, nakshatras. And this script also tells us something important. This is an ancient script that is somewhat different from today's script used in Tamil language. They've used a big circle to represent the um sound. This is not how we write Tamil today. This confirms that these carvings were done during ancient times. But these carvings are not supposed to exist in this ancient temple. They should not be showing these details. Why am I saying this? Look at this rectangle. This is called Maga, and you can clearly see four stars making up the lunar station. This is called Regulus in today's astronomy. But the strange feature is that Regulus or Maga will appear to be a single star for the naked eye. And only when you use a telescope, you realize that it's made of four stars, regulus A, B, C, and D. Yet, these four stars and its positions are accurately carved under the name Maga. So, without using an advanced telescope, how could ancient builders carve these details? Here's another one. This text says Revati which refers to Zeta Piscium in modern astronomy. This is a quintuple star system, meaning it's made of five stars. Quintuple means made of five. But again, all these five stars are not visible to the naked eye, and we need a telescope to see the five stars. But surprisingly, these five stars and their positions are carved accurately in this ancient temple. Mainstream experts tell us that the telescope was invented only about 400 years ago in Europe. And only in the last few centuries, the telescopes 
came to India. So how can we see this kind of advanced information in this ancient temple? Are these carvings new, carved in the last hundred years? The script seems to defy this idea. It must be older, and I could not find any direct evidence that this was carved recently. But in 2014, archaeologists found inscriptions in the temple, and these inscriptions confirm that this temple was built between 862 and 879 AD. These inscriptions also tell us the name of the builder, as well as the king who ruled this region at that time. This means that this temple was built more than 1,100 years ago. According to historians, the most recent expansion or reconstruction happened in the 16th century. So this means the carvings we see are at least 500 years old, but the telescope was only invented 100 years later. And the telescope did not even come to India for another 100 years. So how do we see these details that can only be observed using telescopes? Remember, I'm being very conservative in my estimate. I'm not taking the oldest construction date, which is 1100 years ago. I'm taking the most recent known date of expansion and reconstruction. And even that is 100 years older than the mainstream timeline of the invention of telescope. So how did ancient builders call these star systems accurately? But we have ancient carvings of the telescope in Hindu temples. I've shown you two carvings in two different temples. Both of them show a cylindrical device placed on one eye with the other end pointing to the sky. These are clearly telescope-like devices. Archaeologists accept that both these carvings are about 900 years old. This explains how they observed and documented all these star systems and lunar stations perfectly. But right next to these star systems, you can see these strange gods. Who are they? Is it possible that they have the answers to our questions? How did ancient builders understand the stars so much? Did they use advanced technology like telescopes to study the sky? If not, how could they carve these nakshatras or lunar stations accurately with the exact number of stars? Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I am Praveen Mohan. Thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.